And uh, at this point, I would like to rec recommend that the board approve the June 10th, 2014 policy and regulations, sexual orientation and gender identities, ACB and ACB R1. Thank you, Chairperson. I want to first of all acknowledge the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people. They have welcomed us to work, play, and live on their territory. As visitors to their lands, they have accepted diversity and many cultures and beliefs. In recent days, there have been media reports that critics believe that the amendments will negatively impact the real, real estate market. These comments are irresponsible and unconscionable. The commentary only reaffirms the need to strengthen the LGBTQ plus policy, which fosters inclusion, acceptance, and tolerance. Perpetuating homophobic and hate toward the LGBTQ plus community is totally unacceptable in this day and age. The VSB is known for its commitment to a learning environment that is safe, inclusive, and caring for students of all backgrounds, including LGBTQ+. The, the recommendations to amend the existing policy adopted in 2004 and unanim unanimously reaffirmed in 2012 is about inclusion, understanding and supporting the LGBTQ plus community. It is about celebrating and embracing diversity of all Vancouver residents and supports efforts to assist the LGBTQ plus and gender varied persons in our community and schools. I am especially pleased that this amendment includes gay Aboriginal people. Thank you to the parents, DPAC, educators, Vancouver Elementary Schools, Elementary, Element, Vancouver Elementary Schools, Teachers Association, Vancouver Secondary Teachers Association, educators, academics, and administrators for their support of this amendment. In particular to the students and the VDSC, who are impacted by this policy. To the families who courageously shared personal experiences in the fight for equality. To the legal and medical profession who provided valuable input. In particular, I want to acknowledge Vancouver Coastal Health, who affirmed that this is not a, med not a medical policy, but will continue to work with VSB in, in ensuring that there are best practices provided to the community. The two-year work of staff and members of the Pride Advisory Committee uh, made and reviewed changes that came from input from the delegations throughout the three, three meetings. The law requires that schools comply with the Human Rights Code, which ensures freedom from discrimination on the basis of a child's race, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, religion, disability, color, and ethnicity. The, the Human Rights Code makes three specific points respecting trans, not to discriminate against trans students, not to permit trans students to be the object of bullying, and to accommodate the individual needs of trans students. In summary, the, this recommendation is about our legal, human rights, and social responsibility for the LGBTQ community. I proudly urge my colleagues to support this recommendation.
order, I have a notice of motion in the last meeting. That will come up as, uh, that comes up as new business? Or oh, business should arising? have been before we vote. It's a part of order. It comes after the committee report. Thank you very much. Uh, I have Trustee oh. Lombardi on the speaker's list. Thank you, Chairperson. I'd like to thank all the students, all the parents, all the teachers and community groups who took the time to come and spend time with us as we discussed a very, very important issue in our city. The consultation process that we used to develop this policy has been unprecedented. In my six years as a trustee, we've never had such an extensive consultation process on any policy issue. There was a two-year consultation process that the Pride Committee engaged in to review literature, to look at other policies, and bring forth a policy. We had a three-month consultation process with three dedicated meetings with more than 100 speakers and hundreds of submissions by email and by briefs. I think we've had an opportunity to hear from the community. We heard from students, we heard from parents, we heard from the medical profession, we heard from staff, and we heard from many others. But what they basically said is, we need to continue to make our schools safer and more inclusive for all students. Now, as I listened to the, and I was at every one of the meetings, as most of my colleagues were, I've been reflecting on some of the points that I heard over and over again. Firstly, the proposed policy reflects the practice on the ground. It's based on evidence, of based approaches to supporting our kids, and it reflects and basically codifies what we're doing in our schools right now. Secondly, I heard the urgency of why we need to move ahead with this. I sat and listened to stirring, emotional, and courageous stories from students and parents who have been traveling the road with their children, and that was a very, very powerful experience for me. And thirdly, I heard the theme, Vancouver has safe and inclusive schools, but we can do even better. That's what this policy is trying to do. Now, even though as a Board of Education, it's very clear we have the authority and responsibility to adopt policies without the input or approval of the medical community, I was heartened that the medical community came to us and shared their views with us. We have approval for the policy by Dr. Patricia Daly, the Chief Medical Health Officer of Vancouver. We had a presentation from Vancouver Coastal Health uh, supporting us in what we're doing. And we had other numerous professionals from the medical community who stood up and said, you're doing the right thing. You're not dealing with medical issues, but you're making the right decisions to protect and make kids safer. And that was heartening to hear. We also had support from the faculties of education at SFU and UBC. We had support from the Vancouver District Student Council. We had support from the District Parent Advisory Committee. We had support from the Vancouver Elementary School Teachers Association. We had support from the Vancouver Secondary Teachers Association and many, many other groups in our community. So what does this uh, policy do? It updates and revises our current policy, which we've all been very proud of, but it also puts clearly in the center the importance of protecting and supporting transgender youth. Now, as a trustee, I campaigned on the advocacy for kids and making our schools better places for everyone. This policy is about compassion, tolerance, and inclusivity. I'm proud to stand up as a trustee who wants to make our schools safer and more inclusive for all kids. And as with all policies, we have a responsibility to engage in dialogue like we have been, to adopt a policy, and then work with our communities to help provide information and education to help everyone understand what we're trying to do. Liar. This is the time for trustees to stand up and show that they believe in kids, that they believe in tolerance, that they believe in compassion. And I, as a trustee, am extremely proud to stand up tonight and say that I support this policy 100%. Thank you.
together. Oh, you know what? I'm just, <laughs> you were next. I'm sorry. So I have I have wine and then Wong. Wow. Myla, then tonight, and then Ruth. All right. Okay. So sorry, Trustee Wong. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, first. First off, I would I would like to thank everybody for coming out. I mean, the consultation with Trustee Lombardi has spoke a bit about the consultation process. I think we had uh, more people come out for this than we did for our entire budget meeting. And I will say I very much appreciated some of the stories. Uh, I took a lot of them home with me. I, I listened to a lot of parents. I have a, I have a child in grade seven. And when I hear some of the stories of what you had to go through with your kids navigating our school system, hats off to you, you, you know, your strength that you've shown and, and the support that you gave to your kids is, uh, is really incredible. And as a parent, uh, it did hurt me that you had to go through those struggles. It's really tough enough to raise a child in the city and, uh, and some of the barriers that you had to overcome, uh, incredible. Also to the students and especially some of the students that came back that had graduated from our, uh, our district to hear some of the struggles you went through and even that it took all the way to university to really come to grips uh, with either gender uh, identity issues or any ide uh, identity issues. Uh, thank you for coming back and sharing your stories. Uh, I hope that what you will get out of this is knowing that you will hopefully help make the journey for kids coming into our system a bit easier. And, uh, and I'm, uh, uh, I said it to the last meeting, I'm so honored to be a part of at least helping out a bit to make that journey easier for some of our kids. Um, through some of the consultation, it also was very clear to me that there is a need for this policy. And our kids, we heard a lot about rights, the rights to, be, uh, to have translation, the rights, the parental rights, and whatnot. Number one right for me is that our kids have a right to go to our schools, to feel safe, to have to be accommodated, to have an enjoyable time, and to excel at their academics. That's the number one right for me. And I think that's what this policy does. I think that is what we as trustees are entrusted to make sure that we are creating an environment for our kids uh, to be able to excel, and that includes all kids. Um, as far as parental involvement, uh, I think parental involvement is key. And I'm really glad to have heard back from the teachers and also from Coastal Health that does a lot of psychology services with trans kids, that a lot of times it's actually the involvement of the teachers and some of the healthcare practitioners that break the parents into the equation. And we heard from two parents of trans kids the importance of their, the teacher having them involved in the process and how at first they didn't know what was going on and they didn't know how to act and it was actually the teachers that helped navigate them through the process. So I think this policy actually does a lot for parental rights and really makes parents part of the process. And as I said before too, if my child didn't feel comfortable coming to me to talk about these issues, who better than a teacher for them to come to? So I think uh, I definitely think parents are a huge part, probably the biggest part of this equation, and I think the policy uh, respects that. I think it's also important to understand the scope of this policy. This is an update to the policy. It's also, we are not a medical board here, and uh, one of the doctors from Coastal Health made it very clear, don't deal with medical issues. That's our profession. We will deal with that, and, uh, and, I, and I completely agree with that. We are dealing with uh, our expectations of our staff, our expectations of our students, our expectations of the accommodations that our students can expect when they come to our school. And I think this policy does a really good job outlining that. And I, oh, I do want to commend staff because there, I think there have been three or four revisions of the policy to clarify language, to take in. Uh, I must have had about over a thousand emails on this topic, and I know staff got them as well. And they tried, and I think they did a great job of incorporating that feedback into the policy. And I think that the policy has been improved, and I think it is more clear because of that. So I, uh, I wholeheartedly support this motion, and, uh, and I really hope that it makes a difference for our kids entering our, uh, our system to come. Thank you.
time, effort, and knowledge of the Pride Committee that the, the, the effort they put in developing and initiating this revision, and this, this has been ongoing for, for a number of years. In particularly, um, in particular, I would like to thank Lisa Pedrini and Stephanie Lofquist for their patience and professionalism in responding to the, the countless uh, questions with regards to the revision. I've always been proud of being a member of the 2004 school board when it adopted its first LGBTQ policy. Uh, I'd just like to point out uh, in the audience today is former trustee Jamie Bowie. Who played <laughs> since then. I am proud uh, as well of defending that policy when it was questioned or denied by others earlier in this term. I, once again, am proud to be part of this lengthy consultation process. A long, open discussion is a good thing for both sides of the debate. The trustees all have enough information to make a sound, educated deliberation and decision today. Almost 100, 100 delegations before the board, as Trustee Lombardi stated, is precedent setting for an issue. This revision is simply providing clear guidelines to current practice, practice that has been in play for years already. This revision, particularly Section G, Gender Identity and Gender Expression, is a healthy tool that provides guidelines for staff to follow, offers pragmatic steps to support our vulnerable students. The steps are already what happens in schools today. I think it's very important, very important, when staff present it and answer the question with regards of the impact what is being done at this stage. If a student comes forward, the teacher, counselor, or administrator supports the student to ask if they're feeling okay. Secondly, they ask, have you talked to your parents? If the child is nervous, they usually ask, can I support you? Can I support you to talk to your parents? They try to get that line of communications open with the parents at the earliest time as possible in a safe environment. The policy is far from trying to exclude parents. In fact, it is about doing everything to include parents and families. To be clear, and stated by a number of the trustees prior to my speaking, this is not a medical policy. And I, I find the need to state this is because this was brought up and others tried to make an issue of this. Staff do not administer medical care, nor do they make diagnosis. This is a district policy for the school community. This is a policy that focuses on the interests of the student. It is about social integration and participation by students. It is about ensuring a school is inclusive, respectful, and safe for all students. In my first term as a trustee, I witnessed a school, and unnamed for obvious reasons, where a petition was circulated among students, among students against a particular child whose parents did not fit the norms as perceived by some in society. The petition was to have that student kicked out of that school. This was shocking, but true. Since that incident, and this is over a decade, I have vowed to ensure we have the best policy to protect our students. And this revision to a good policy in 2004 is a move for a better policy, and we keep striving for that. This policy comes from evidence-based best practice. It follows public health, it follows the Public Health Agency of Canada's gender identity in schools. The policy is further supported by health professionals, most particularly and strongly by the Vancouver Coastal Health Authority. 
They are the health experts and are mandated by the Ministry of Health. All five members of the Vancouver Coastal Health and the Chief Medical Officer fully endorses the policy in no uncertain terms. Support and the trustees individually and, and as a group named of the whole list of supporters uh, during the consultation process. Vancouver District Student Council, as well as all individual student presenters, VESPA, VSTA, administrators, Vancouver District Parent Advisory Committee, SFU and UBC Faculties of Education, and I can go on through the list. I strongly urge all trustees to think long and hard about supporting our students in a healthy environment before they boldly cast the roads. This is a basically a common sense, nothing more than a common sense revision, but I fully and loudly support the motion and I urge the other trustees to as well. I think it's important tonight, and I really hope all trustees are going to come to 
together on this one, I think it's important to send a message that, well, we've had a tough discussion, and sometimes you have to have tough discussions, but that we go forward, we go forward solidly, that there's no question whatsoever about the commitments of this board to keep every single student safe, supported, and included in schools. So I'm going to urge everyone tonight to support this and send a strong message to, not just to Vancouver, but internationally, as we know this discussion has gone uh, about what it is we are in Vancouver, and I'm so proud to be part of this board.
I'd like to be there the floor. To parents. I'd like to know which groups. Point of order. Point of order. Which parents? 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 Which parents
brought forward. Just, just for clarity for the record, the modus of motion is our next is, is item, um, it is on the agenda, item 6B in the package is a new business item and that will come after the committee report. After we, we approve the policy, what, sorry, what's the point of the consultation afterwards? Or that we have, that's the message you're delivering? Please follow the order in the meeting. Are you complete? Are you done? Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Trustee Bowen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but otherwise you can feel you can hear me. Go ahead. Can, can, can you hear? Okay. Um, what we I've been mean, asking for is to, um, one more, at least one more consultation regarding the latest revised version. Everybody is here so confused. Which version are we talking about? The April 16, April 14, June 6, June 10, or June 13 version, even in your motion, you got it wrong. So like we have consultation on the revised policy and regulations, sexual orientation agenda, that is ACB and ACBR1 on the April 16 version. It's ended in a third meeting on May 29 when the lady collapsed and we still have over 100 delegations still not heard. There was a second revision to the draft and revised policy and regulations on June 10th, and there's a third revised version on the revised policy. Everybody is confused here. So what I'm asking for... Yes. Don't say everybody. And even in a motion, it's confused. <laughs> Otherwise, they're all voting for You're the wrong right. motion. You're right. So, so I want to be asking for just one more. Because because I'm going to disrupt. They will have to leave the room. I'm going to ask for people in the audience to be quiet, or we'll have to go outside of the room. Thank you. So. What I'm asking for is just at least one more consultation on the most latest revised version so that everybody stay on the same page. We all know which version we are all talking about. Most parents, they all generally accepted the 2004 policy and the regulations. How come parents, they're so concerned about the 2014 revised approval version? Because it's so confusion. People are not, they don't even, they're unclear. And, would you like me to refer to the social security finding it confusing? Excuse me, I have to finish that. I'm saying she's raising a question. I'm asking we can have staff clarify the question. I'm it's asking is the audience clear? No, which would, the audience is not clear we which one. No, we're not. I have 100% clear. We're, we're not. We're clear. We're not clear. We're not clear. We need more time. Out of order, I have to I have to We heard from parents and they've expressed their view on the reverse revised policy. The parents were concerned about their rights being informed. A lot of parents, they all want to share translation of at least they know what the policy is about. And this is where the confusion is. Parents are not clear which version we are talking about, what exactly the policy is. What we are asking for is more like just at least one consultation. At least one consultation meeting for the revised revised June 10th, 2014 policy. So what we are asking for is more like this is more like dialogue on the most latest version. Yes, I'm moving the amendment. Um, that they are both of provide a consultation process for the revised June 10th, third revised, is this what they call? That the board provide a consultation process for the further revised June 10th, 2014 policy and regulations, sexual orientation and gender identities. Is the All right. So it's called further revise at June 10, 2014. All right, um, so we have a proposed amendment to the motion that the board provide a consultation process for the further revised June 10, 2014 policy. Uh, policy and regulations. Policy and regulations. Yeah. regulations. Okay. Sexual orientation and gender identities, ACB and ACB R1. Thank you, it is now on the table. So trustees, we are now debating the proposed amendment. Do you want to speak to it, or you feel you have spoken to it? All right. Thank you. Trustee Lombardi. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I will not be supporting this amendment. As I stated earlier, we have had two years of the Pride Committee reviewing, researching, bringing back recommendations. We had five committee three meetings. We had three dedicated hearings. We had a hundred speakers. We had hundreds and hundreds of submissions. We have heard from our constituents. The change in the wording that we have in front of us right now is housekeeping. There is no need for any further consultation. It's time for leadership and to take a vote. I'll be not supporting this amendment. Thank you. I have myself on the speaker's list. And uh, first of all, just to clarify for all of us, um, I'm just going to ask Associate Superintendent Cornell if you could just clarify uh, the version that is uh, it was in the original motion so we know what we were debating because a couple of the trustees seem to have some questions about that. So through the chair, um, when staff presented at the last meeting, uh, Elisa Padrini went through the document at that time, uh, noted several things that we would be switching prior to this meeting. They were all housekeeping typos, including things such as removing uh, the term intersex uh, from the LGBTQ definition in the glossary, moving the reference to the Human Rights Code and to other relevant policies and legislation up at the end of the policy rather than down at the end of the glossary. So she went through, I'd have to look back at the minutes, but she went through um, about, about six different things that we said we would fix because we, we said at that time we'd seen some typos that we still had. That is all that has changed between that public meeting and tonight. Thank you very much for that clarification and I will not be supporting the proposed amendment. I referred earlier to efforts to delay and derail and uh, uh, this frankly in my opinion there's no substantive uh, issues here. We have been through this thoroughly. I think we all understand that the process is about uh, getting feedback, making those revisions to ensure the wording is clear and consistent. That's really what the purpose of this process was about and clearly we were able to do that. So. Uh, to, to try to delay this yet again in, in some sort of attempt, and we've seen that, we've heard that from people who disagree with the uh, intent of it asking uh, uh, to delay, and we've heard that in, in strategy before. We've heard it in, in videos that have surfaced about trustees talking about their attempts to prevent any policy from coming in and that one of their strategies would be to delay. So I will certainly not be supporting an amendment.
to have it translated properly and to have translators available so that the information could be assessed on the board and the people who are speaking. It's also very important that, uh, that uh, we, we have uh, support from parents for this policy. And at this point, it's in serious doubt. So I think the amendment is important. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I thank uh, Still on the right, um, our Superintendent Cornello for pointing out the changes that have taken place. I'm not going to be supporting this. Uh, Mr. Tonight's uh, views of this uh, is not shared by myself or by the NPA caucus, and I'm not interested in slowing the process down any longer. I think it's time to move on, and uh, I'll be making some other statements. Uh, when we get back to the main agenda item.